Okay, let's talk about gravitational fields. Uh, gravitational fields, well, like all fields, uh, field theory is our explanation of non-contact forces, how forces can act between objects without those objects actually touching. You know that you don't have to be standing on the Earth to be attracted to it. So a gravitational force is a non-contact force. Uh, so that's explained by gravitational fields. Uh, a field is a sphere of influence. So if we imagine the Earth, we're just going to draw this in two dimensions, but imagine it extending out into three as a sphere around the Earth or around any body with mass. We have basically uh, these field lines that are directed toward the center of the Earth. Because you can imagine if you took any object and uh, placed it right here, it would fall toward the Earth. It would be attracted toward the Earth, and that would be the direction of the, uh, the force it's experiencing. So these field lines represent the direction of the force, and the, uh, the density of the field lines is usually our indication of how strong the force is, so the relative magnitude of the force. You can see that these are vectors. Uh, they have both magnitude and direction. Uh, so a gravitational field is a vector field. A gravitational field is usually represented by a lowercase g. The units are newtons per kilogram because it's exerting a certain amount of force on a certain mass. Uh, you see we've used g before. g is usually uh, also representing the gravitational acceleration. And what we find is that the gravitational field strength is actually uh, equivalent to the gravitational acceleration. So uh, an object with a mass will experience a certain force uh, and because of that force will experience an acceleration and that acceleration will be equal to the field strength. There are two ways we talk about gravitational fields. We talk about them in terms of the object experiencing the field, so that'd be this one right here, or the object producing the field, uh, say the Earth here. So it, for the object experiencing the field, the gravitational field strength is the, the force that it's experiencing, the gravitational force, divided by the mass of that object. We'll call that M1 for the object 1 here. Uh, the force is in newtons, mass is in kilograms, of course, and so we see our units work out. So the gravitational field strength uh, for an object experiencing a field is the, the force over the mass. Uh, and that looks just like our uh, gravitational force equation we've come across before, m times g, uh, same thing basically. So and that's for the object experiencing the field. For the object producing the field, the, uh, the Earth uh, here, uh, our uh, gravitational field strength equation is a little bit different. I keep saying gravitational field strength because the, uh, we're just talking about determining the strength with these equations. The direction is determined from the, uh, from the diagram. We know that it's toward the center of the mass. So the gravitational field strength for an object producing the field is the uh, gravitational constant that we've come across before uh, times the mass of the object producing the field. We'll call that m2 and uh, divided by the square of the distance from the center of the object. So r would be, uh, let's draw another object here, uh, r would be the distance from the center of the object to the center of the other object. So we'll label that r. And again, uh, g is 6.67 uh, times 10 to the negative 11. Uh, mass is the mass of this object here, uh, R we just talked about. These are the two different ways of determining the gravitational field strength. You see that if we set these equal to each other, uh, we come back to uh, our familiar equation, um, G M2 over R squared. Uh, let's put the M1 up here, and we see that's just back to uh, Newton's universal gravitational equation. Uh, that we've uh, that we've seen before. So gravitational field strength for objects producing fields right here uh, for objects experiencing the field and uh, the overlapping of gravitational fields is basically what uh, gives us a gravitational force.
Now, because, let's just rewrite that equation, the uh, gm over r squared. We see that the gravitational field will vary with the mass of the object and the distance that you are from the center of it. This means that on the surface of each planet or moon or whatever we're talking about, uh, each of those has a different mass, uh, each of them has a different radius, and so on the surface of each we'll have a different surface gravity, which you've seen before, uh, a sur different surface gravitational field. Uh, this value will also vary, so if we, uh, let's say we draw the moon here, the moon has much less mass, but it's smaller, uh, but uh, as a result of that standing on the surface of the moon, uh, you'll, you'll be experiencing a different gravitational field um, than you are uh, standing on the surface of the Earth. But uh, it also varies. Uh, we know that the, let's talk about the Earth specifically, we know that the Earth is spinning uh, fairly quickly, and so it's not exactly a sphere. It's a little bit uh, pushed out, um, kind of in the middle. It's, it's wider at the equator, and so because it's wider, we know that the radius will be larger. Uh, the, uh, the gravitational field strength is actually different at the uh, equator here than it is uh, you know, when we get up near the poles. Uh, those would, there would be different gravitational uh, fields. In general, though, we'll talk about the average gravitational field strength on the surface of a planet or around an object at a certain distance or something like that. So let's do, uh, let's do an example. Let's talk about uh, the average gravitational field strength on the surface of Mars. So off the top of my head, well, no, actually from my notes, uh, we know that the, uh, the mass of Mars is about uh, 6.42 times 10, oops, 10 to the uh, 23 kilograms, 26, 23 kilograms. Um, so Mars is fairly big, but uh, not quite as uh, uh, massive as the Earth. Uh, the radius of Mars is uh, on average, or approximately, we'd say 3.4 times 10 to the 6 meters, again, kind of on the scale of the Earth. Uh, so that would give us uh, enough data to be able to find the gravitational field strength, or the average gravitational field strength on the surface of Mars. Because we're talking about the uh, field being produced by an object, we'll use the equation g equals gm over r squared. Uh, so the, we know M, we know R, we're looking at, we need to know G as well. Uh, G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared, which you've seen before. Uh, so we substitute those values in to the equation. Uh, the, uh, I guess we'll write that all out. Uh, so G equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. We should write this in with units, but I won't here. Uh, times the mass, 6.42 times 10 to the 23, divided by the radius, 3.4 times 10 to the 6. And remember that the radius is squared. Common mistake to forget that, squared. So then we grab our calculator and work that out, and we find that the gravitational field strength on the surface of the Earth is... I'm sorry, did I say the surface of the Earth? The surface of Mars, uh, we find it to be uh, 3.70 times 10 to the... Uh, oh no, not 10, it's 10 to the 3.70. Uh, and then the units would be uh, newtons per kilogram. So that is our discussion of gravitational field strength.